what's up everybody. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I'm about to go to my pain doctor and um, work on getting some back injections, but it's only my, <clears throat> my second time seeing them. And here in Kentucky with pain doctors, you can't really do much. Um, like even though I've had six brain surgeries and I had the most painful disease you can have, the trigeminal neuralgia if you don't know. Um, I've had six brain surgeries, not just one or two or even three or even four. Um, it, it explicitly says that the surgeries are so dangerous that the doctors hate doing them unless it's like a last resort thing. And um, actually one of my doctors at um, my primary care doctor, um, like, a, like I saw her instead of him because he wasn't there that day and she has it. And um, she's had it for like her whole life, or half her life, like 20 something years. And she's uh, like 45 or something. Um, but the thing about it is, is that um, even with uh, the state that I'm in, with my condition they're still basically treating me the same as if like I broke my back or my arm and so it's like kind of like um, three painkillers and like three nerve medicine or three nerve pills and like three muscle relaxers when I was taking four or five muscle relaxers the max dose four, gab four gabapentin which is nerve and then I was taking up to five hydrocodone. Then my Dr. Wang reduced it to four and then this doctor reduced it to three. When I really should be taking like four or five or a higher dose than the 10 hydrocodone. But what can I do? And the reason I left uh, my first pain doctor is because um, I was, trying to get better treatment and stuff and I was wanting to see the doctor like the actual doctor not the practitioner like with what I have I need a doctor I don't I need a board certified doctor I don't need a practitioner that doesn't have the experience and this and that and she doesn't even write the scripts for the medicine to begin with and they were refusing me my medical right to see my, my fucking doctor which is damn near malpractice that's like saying you want to have an appeal and you want to see a judge, but you can't see a judge and it's your constitutional right. We all have a God-given right to be treated like human beings and be decent to each other. Even if, you're, even if you know you're going to say no to something, at least give somebody a fighting chance. But when you straight up are just hateful and you don't even... Like dealing with legal stuff that's affecting someone's life sometimes life and death or your health same thing I'm always going to do the ethical thing the, the, the Christian thing forget about what the world says I do the right thing by the Lord and be decent and fair to people like the Lord was and so um, but the good thing is, is I did have a doctor um one of my doctors is this very more, the only doctor I've had out of hundreds that is like real about everything and about the struggles and um, I have a, an, another option through them um, to have a kind of like a contingency plan or whatever, um, which, which I, didn't, I didn't ask about it. They were just asking me and I was just telling them. And so um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad about that. Um, f 
for sure. Um, but, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm watching, I was doing the video on my stupid alarm and all. Um, but, uh, Uh, lost my train of thought. I was trying to get some stuff done yesterday and I ended up falling asleep. Slept for about five hours. Uh, my back is improving with the chiropractic stuff. Um, but it's still extremely uh, uneasy and uncomfortable to sleep. And I kind of have to sleep with my legs off of the couch. And then... Um, Uh, kind of half my body on the couch so I don't put all my weight on my back um, wish I didn't have to do it that way but it, it is what it is um, But I'm going to make like a little intro video for my page. I try to put an intro video on the front of the YouTube thing, but it's like, it acts real janky. Like, I don't know exactly why it doesn't want to um, comply with my wishes. Um, if you got flies in the kitchen, don't forget to do the dishes. If you got beef with your woman, don't forget to kiss, kiss the missus. When a stranger calls, have you checked the children? Tired of pizza. Susie Q and Bobby Joe asking what's for dinner. If I always keep it real, how could I be a pretender? If I'm the world's champ, how could I ever be? A beginner. If I'm always true to God and truly saved, how could I ever be a sinner? If I'm a realist, how could I ever be called cynical? If I'm quoting scripture, how could I never not be biblical? If I'm never at the bottom and I'm always on top, how could I not be on the pinnacle? Give the glory to God, the Most High, never put any man up on a pedestal. I'll be dropping knowledge on these people and they say that I'm minuscule. But my knowledge of life is vast, like a swimming pool. It's hot outside, and I hop in that thing. I'm swimming cool. If you don't want to hear the truth about life, that means you've always been a fool. What is the profit of man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Nothing but despair and regret and sorrow in the lake of fire. person to represent me, it would be Jesus Christ, my Lord and Sire. Being saved and making it to heaven to see my mom again is my only heart's desire. Before I fall to my knees to thank the Lord for what he's done for me, and God built the whole empire, not just for you and me, but somebody's dog named Oscar Meyer. I could keep going like the energizer bunny, which means I never get tired. I speak the truth, so no, I'm not a liar. So you could use this rhyme as an outlier. Get saved and repent today and remember, Jesus wants you to be higher, to be an employee of heaven.
as for all man, woman, and child, my brethren. But anyway, enough of that rap stuff. Um, so I'm watching uh, Trap Lord Ross. I don't know if I said it already, but um, he covers gang violence and gang activities and things like that. Um, and we never want to. Um, glorify these things, or like the serial people, or the worst of the worst, or um, liars, cheaters, stealers, killers, whatever, we don't want to do that, but um, we do want to acknowledge it, because it happens, and we have to um, address it correctly with uh, children and their youth. And um, my brother was a murderer, multiple. My brother, Mikey, that was a crib. And don't nobody in my family really mention that, but I do. Somebody don't like it, we talk to God. I didn't do what he did. It ain't got nothing to do with me, except he's my brother and I love him. And I died for my brother. And it happened just down the street from me. And I always think, like, well, if I would have been there, I would have had to defend my brother, because that's my brother, man. Even though he ain't got nothing to do with me. That's family. But if nothing else, having my, my, uh, I'm gonna call her name is Sydney, I named her after my, no, Beverly, named her after my granny. So my, when my dad wanted to marry my mom, my granny said, uh, now that's my beefy, that's my Monique, and if you heard her, I got a friend named Smith and Wesson and a shovel. And I didn't get that till I got about like eight or nine the reference, eight, nine, or 10, or something like that. I'm a, I'm a, always been a very sharp um, kid, but all kids don't understand adult stuff. Speaking of which, my dad had a gun. It was probably 45, because it was real heavy, and I was asleep. Um, that's the apartment where a bat was hanging on the doorknob, and my dad touched it, and the, he saw glowing red eyes, and my dad ran out like a punk and left me at the door and it like shrieked and flew off because there was like a little over little half a like circle cut out tin thing majiggy or whatever and um uh Yeah. 
he was asleep and I woke up and uh, I picked it up and I was playing with it and I almost kind of aimed it at my face sort of but something told me to not do that because basically the reason little ones knock themselves off on accident is because they um, aren't no one aren't able to decipher that it's not a toy and um, I guess sometimes the bullets might have ricocheted or something that's possible too so never like shoot at anything metal or solid because bullets will ricochet like don't shoot a gun in the air because it'll, it'll go down and it can hit somebody at a, and it'll go down quicker and definitely probably instantly kill you from the velocity and the speed if you don't know if you have uh, if you have those I would hope that you know that but if you don't um that's basically why I always, I'm always making random videos because I just speak on whatever comes to my mind. Um, I'm not trying to sit here and act like I know everything because I don't. Uh, but yeah. Okay, there she is. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a little story about that. But had I, had I not had that, that wherewithal to be like, hey, I don't think this is a good idea, it wouldn't have rocked out good. Um, my dad taught me how to get women when I was little it was a girls and if you don't know I've never not until recently like until like a year and a half ago I've never not been surrounded by women not to sound like that or nothing it's just a fact and the reason I'm mentioning that is because when that is the case such that it can be um often when you're in a bad environment there's always there's already the guy and girl attraction thing going on but then also you have the natural carnal um, attraction to women that you want to have their attention and time and that and it's basically like okay I'm gonna get women I'm gonna de-stress I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that that type of situation and um, you may not believe it but I've grown up in that environment and trust me when I tell you you could have the most docile person and then they'll go over to the dark side strictly because they want to um, be with a, a woman. Um, and then also if you're a straight guy like me and you naturally love women, which I do, or if you're bisexual, um, and that's a whole other issue if you're um, if you are uh, in gangs um, but uh, it's going to be even more of a quicker desire to join the empire and instead of somebody like uh, I don't know Yoda you got somebody like Palpatine so there's Palpatine's weight lying in wait 
round the clock to get a hold of, of Anakin. And then everybody don't, everybody don't turn out like Luke. Luckily, I did. Talking about Star Wars, if you don't know. But, um, we wouldn't have to worry about doing all that if we help our youth help these babies that desperately, desperately need somebody and um, do the right thing the first time which is teach them right from wrong and most of the time you do that 9 out of 10 they're going to have their phase of rebellion but they're not going to be totally lost and I don't care what none of y'all say if you don't agree with this then you're just a lazy parent you shouldn't be a parent but if parents would help our babies from the beginning give them the best chance to make the best decisions early um, we wouldn't have this calamity that we have now. Because if you're not from the streets or if you're not from a bad area, the streets are the streets. No matter if it's a trailer park, if it's where uh, Oprah lives or in the middle or anywhere, anything bad can happen at any time. Anybody can be, anybody can be touched. Anybody can get got don't think you can because when you start thinking like that that's when you get caught slipping getting caught slipping means that uh, you get murked because you're not being aware of your surroundings at all times look up Mills Lane the boxer the most famous er, the um, referee for boxing he's the most uh, famous the referee there is in the world of anything um, and he's like protect yourself at all times I got about 12 more minutes before I need to go let me check the thing I gotta be there at 11 so I'm gonna get there early um, but always be aware of your surroundings never assume anything People forget that we live in a world where somebody can come up on you and do something and in a split second it could be over with. So and I've had more than 15 near-death experiences so I'm talking from a point of urgency. And um, going through it once is bad enough or going through it like with my mom having cancer, stage 4 colon cancer which is supposed to be terminal but God delivered her because she knew she needed more time and she got it and she got right and then she died right after she forgave my grandma and everything like that um, which I'm eternally grateful to God for because if my mom would have checked out on her own or by uh, illness, I, I would have checked out too. So I can't be nothing but grateful. Um, Just like a menace to society where the granddad is trying to talk to uh, Kane, I think is his name, and trying to administer to him with scripture and everything. He's like, don't you care if you live or die? And then as he, he got murked at the end, he's like, my granddad used to always ask me if I cared if I lived or die. And he's like, yeah, actually I do. And it was too late. And when you play with the devil, you win devil prizes. And um, it's 
it's not a game. It's real life. And, um, so, the point is, is, if your kid turns out bad and you got the nerve to be like, oh, well, they're grown and they made their own decisions. You only know what you're taught. You don't know what you don't know. So instead of you being the teacher, you're letting these substitute teacher Palpatines get a hold of our our kids when you're supposed to be the parent and you're letting Palpatine be the parent. And then you got the nerve to sit here and blame it on the child that didn't even ask to be here in the first damn place. And can't nobody tell me I'm wrong because my mom took me in and gave me the game the right way and that's why I say she taught me the best part about how to be a person and the worst part and my point in saying that and being so uh, non-apologetic about it is because if my mom hadn't done that and just be like, oh, he'll, you know, Jess, Jess or Malcolm, or you know, um, he'll figure it out. If, that, if that's what she would have done, then I would have turned out totally different. But because she at least gave me a fighting chance, at that point, I did make my own decision. Now, there's a difference in that. But being a parent, don't stop just because your kid's a, a, an adult. My, my nieces and nephew are always going to be my, my babies no matter how old they are. My little baby cousins are always going to be my baby cousins. My older cousins are always going to be my older cousin. They, they don't change for nothing. So why y'all seem to think it changes just because somebody's an adult and all of a sudden you you lack your parental responsibilities because they can make their own decisions is, is absurd. That's why we're supposed to respect and listen to our elders, which people don't do either. Because regardless of what happens, wherever I'm at, I've always taken care of Joker and been his daddy. I ain't never just been like, oh, he's just a cat. It ain't no big deal. It's always a big deal. So be a parent and, and get, get a hold of your kids while they're young and teach them something. And then you want to sit there and cry like people did at my brother's funeral talking about, oh, I wish I could have done more. No, you ain't do shit. You ain't do shit. If you want to do more, you do more when somebody's living out when they're in the ground, man. Y'all better wake the fuck up, man. And if you look at me and my brother, I chose to not do those things. Because my mom put it in my mind early, while it was going on, to make me aware and cognizant seeing hearing gunshots and seeing people get killed and drug transactions and the males in my family beating the hell out of girls women and them screaming and this and that and crackheads and drugs and there's chaos all over the place so in the midst of chaos there's got to be some type of foundation and and god is the foundation of everything i'm but i'm just talking about from an earthly standpoint we got to have a, a good foundation for our, our kids. And then people want to be like, oh, our kids are the future, but you ain't teach them how to have no future. You letting the future the rapper be their future. And he ain't talking about shit. Like Tupac wasn't perfect, but at least he was trying to be like, keep your head up and changes. That's real music. That's real inspiration. But then people just want to be like, oh, well, he was smashing all these women and this. Okay, he's a grown man. Separate the two. You can't sit here and villainize everything for every bad thing they do and not give them no credit for the good things they do. Which is what I'm learning to do with my dad. That's not fair. That's like acknowledging the only time that your kid gets a good grade, an A+, plus, that's the only time you're like, yeah, you did good, you're so great. Like, that's the only time you give him credit. How does that make good sense? They don't. That's biased and hypocritical.
That's like saying your kid only loves you whenever you give him a present. And I don't talk about nothing I ain't been through. So, that's what it is. That's real talk. That's real rap. And that's where we're at. And, um... So... I hope that helps somebody. Uh, but real parents know that being a parent never stops. That's my main point. And a, a, a kid does not ask to be brought in the world. Whether the kid's in a state of pregnancy or not, kids aren't in a state. I'm just saying that. Whoever you were with, you had no intention of uh, any type of uh, um, child being brought into the world. It was just what happened happened, which does happen. I've been through the same stuff, so I can't say nothing. But um, they didn't ask to be here, and if, if, you, if you're gonna have them here, then act like, act like you want them here, because the bottom line is, is if you have a kid and you don't be a, a parent, that means you never want to be a parent to begin with, and the only reason you're saying that you did is because you're trying to impress somebody or seem like something you're not, and then eventually your kid finds out who, who the good parent is, and then they don't mess with you no more, and you get mad. But it's your fault. Something happens out of your control, that's one thing in life. But if it's something that you had total control and decision over, and a sound mind, and this and that, there wasn't no crime or nothing being done, uh, you, you can't, you, you, you cannot be found without excuse. You know what I mean? Um... And I'm on both sides of the spectrum. Um, see, I gotta get ready. Credits to uh, Trap Lord Ross for um, doing his videos and stuff. Um, but watching his video just kind of put it in my mind to do this video real quick uh, for everybody out in the struggle in the streets, that type of thing. Um, basically it y'all um, that's basically what I wanted to say and um, I'm gonna actually get some some videos out I feel pretty decent um, kids are our future. Whenever the Lord comes back, he comes back. But until then, our kids are our future. And um, let's start acting like it, man. But I'd love to know your, your thoughts, your opinions. Yada, yada, yada. So get at me, dog. And um, Luke 18.1 Always pray and never give up. 
Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And um, I love y'all, man. Throw a like, throw a follow, a comment. I got to, um, Twitch, Twitch said they're stopping using Twitch Studio on the 30th because only 4% of people use it, which is kind of odd. So I'm switching over to OBS and I was having some technical issues with getting it to go proper on streaming and then I got to get my like my chat and all that stuff to come up um, so uh, I'm gonna get that uh, rocking and rolling and then uh, I'll be on Twitch I get my pain medicine on the 18th I think yeah today's the 16th and I still got plenty of medicine so I'll probably talk the whole day today on my mic I feel pretty pretty decent luckily I woke up without having um, severe pain in my head with my nerves like nerve and everything and um Let me let me check this application thing for the the um, what do you call that thing? The neighborhood place. I'm just gonna call Andrea directly right now today, actually, and see if she can make me a incognito appointment. Let's see that neighborhood place appointment. Housing stability. says to call back May 28th. Yeah, see, I did it uh, last Monday when it said to do it. And Yeah, I'm gonna, I gotta do some, some troubleshooting stuff on my, uh, on my, um, on my OBS for my Twitch stream. I might, I might stream on YouTube, actually, if I can get, I'll try to, actually, I'll try to stream on YouTube and see how that goes. I can figure it out. It's kind of janky, like it's confusing to do it on there, but I'll try. Uh, oh, but I tried. I stayed up through the night, to like the 21st, I think it was, to um, get the uh, the stream or the um, help with my rent, and then it didn't even like it. It's supposed to have bookings open, and that I got there right even before, like 10 minutes before it even opened and it didn't even have nothing in there to like 
um, applied for. Um, just to just to illustrate that I'm doing everything I can do, to, and not just being like, oh, I don't do nothing, just give me, give me, give me type thing. But again, if you don't know, I've, I've worked my whole life. Only reason I'm not working right now is because the red cap thing works is out of my control. Um, but no matter what happens, even if stuff's out of your control, as long as you know that you gave 100% effort, then um, you ain't got nothing to be ashamed of, and the Lord knows that. Um, but regardless, the most important thing to do is to stay close to God at all times. And uh, I know he uh, appreciates that more than we uh, more than we know. Where is he? Uh, I can't see where you are. So it's 181 and it's 25k. Joker, come on, son. So that's another reason I get impatient with him because he's always like coming up and I'm trying to do something. Oh yeah, it's definitely not worth doing that. That's I figured it wasn't. did good, didn't he? Come here. I love you. I'm sorry, Yella. I'm a mean daddy. I'm sorry, Yella. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yelling at a baby. You know I love you. It's a baby. Good baby. for my buddy and I gotta get out of here. My keys. So we'll set it up the front. But yeah man. If you want to support the channel you can share my GoFundMe. There's a cash app. You can donate on Twitch or you can do a, a sub or bits on Twitch. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to monetize Discord. And uh, I'm out.